Ladies and gentlemen, the ID Life. The ID Life is our vision of urban mobility for young generation. A glimpse of the future. A fully electric Volkswagen in the compact segment. Our ID Showcar beautifully captures our key competences. Electrification, software integration, quality and premium appeal. They will pave the way to the future of mobility. And in this future, people want more. They are always on the lookout for the next great experience. A feeling that goes beyond mobility. The ID Life will match this feeling. This car is ready for extraordinary experiences online and offline. Imagine watching your favorite movie, counting the stars in the sky at night, enjoying nature far away from the city bus, or playing video games with your friends wherever, whenever you want. The ID Life will adapt your lifestyle. It will expand your living space. It will be your companion for life. Ladies and gentlemen, the ID Life proves yet again how unique the MEB is. It is the most scalable electric architecture in the industry. We are only just beginning to tap the potential of the MEB. Performance, charging and range will keep improving with every new model. With the scaling of the platform, costs and profitability will further improve. This is a key to enter the 20,000 euro price segment. An attractive, affordable and compact ID model will be launched by 2025. Sister models for Cupra and Skoda are also planned. While Volkswagen will provide the platform and technology, Seat will develop the cars and Carriot will deliver the software. We will build our new compact family, most likely in Spain, and we also intend to localize battery production there. This demonstrates once again that within the brand volume group, we are able to generate great synergies more than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, our Accelerate strategy carries its name for a reason. Every year, we will launch a new electric model. The next one is the ID5. Our first SUV coupe will celebrate its world premiere early November. The ID bus will enter the market next year, and the ID6, a highly emotional Ford coupe, will follow in 2023. By 2030, already more than 70% of all new Volkswagens in the Europe will be electric. The last Volkswagen with a combustion engine will roll off the line here in Europe between 2033 and 35. We are pushing forward our way to zero. We enable millions of people to be part of our technological journey. Our name is our commitment. We are the people's car. Volkswagen once again will provide mobility for generations to come. We prove that with the ID Like. I would like to thank my team, Jasmin, Johannes, and Marvin, and all the colleagues who created the ID Life. Well done. Thank you for your attention. We wish you a great IAA in Munich. Take care and goodbye. Thank you.
everyone, and welcome to the Volkswagen EA Way to Zero talk on design. My name is Martin, and I have now the pleasure of introducing a quite remarkable man. He started his career at Volkswagen in 1993. He designed cars for Audi, and at some point he became head of design at Skoda. And in July last year, he then took over the management of Volkswagen design. And he sees his role as much more than being responsible for just stylish cars. He wants to use the vehicle design to change the way people think. And in this way, help Volkswagen to become a key player in the transition to sustainable mobility. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Volkswagen Head of Design, Josef Kaban. Come on, give it up. Hello, Joseph. I'm Martin. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you. Very good. So let me ask you, you've been in this position for a little over a year now. How's it been for you? How's this personal journey been since you joined the Way to Zero? Uh, it was a great time. I mean, I have to say the time went very quickly. I mean, one year is uh, some time, but uh, no, it, was, it feels like yesterday. But for me, it was a little bit like come back home because, uh, I, as you already mentioned, I used to work for Volkswagen for 10 years. Therefore, uh, this was great, uh, great feeling to come home. And you will now share your vision a little bit more in detail, but can you give us one thing that is really important to you when it comes to designing this transformation to sustainable mobility? Yeah, I mean, it is, it is the most important, of course, we always love the cars and that we uh, will love them even in the future. But they will change, but they will change in a positive way. And I think this will be the greatest uh, challenge what we have. And I'm looking forward for the time. Thank you very much. And we are now looking forward to hearing more about your vision on this transformation. Your stage is yours. Thank you. Take it away. Thank you. Thank Joseph. you very much. So warm welcome from my side, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And... Uh, I will, I will just make a little, little talk about the design, not too long. I mean, one hour is not much. No, I, I, I'm kidding. It will be probably 10 minutes. But uh, I will start from the beginning a uh, little bit with something what we always started with. Almost every of us starting to draw maybe first the sun. And then some of us started to draw as the child cars, yeah, little bit cars, maybe the family, but the cars was the mobility was always exciting us. It's something what actually very well fit to the human as, uh, and, the, and the, our society. The mobility is part and we start to like it from the very, very low, uh, very low age. So, but when we look at this, uh, of course, uh, we have, let's say, as well, let's say, brands which are very successful, but as well we have the world, which is as well our world, and we want to take, and we will even take care more and more how this link, the mobility and the world is looking in the future. Of course, it is responsibility not only for our adults, but as well for the future generations. Therefore, of course, we focus always on the people, and this is something what Volkswagen was always facing on. Yeah, when I look, for example, the, the needs and the, the way how the human is using the senses, that's something what Volkswagen and we are always as designers, and as well as the, as the development uh, team, always facing on. So, but what is actually for us as human very important is always innovation. Innovation is something like engine of our society. We always want to learn something more. We want to do the next steps. And the next steps we don't only want to do, we want to experience them. We want to share them. We want to have them in the cars. We want to have them in everywhere where we go. All the touch points. And that's something what is important and we love. But of course, it is important as well how we do it. In a way, when we look, for example, the materials and the way how we, how we put our behave to the to the, uh, to the world and to the materials, the products. This is something what in future is getting more and more on importance. Of course, the materials in the aesthetic as we know them, they will improve. We will learn much more about them and we will get even more excited uh, in the future about this balance between the technology and the material. But of course, what is important if we have, uh, let's say, Excellent technology, if we have update technologies and we have good materials, the main thinking behind this is, well, 
to make long-lasting product. Long-lasting means, in principle, to take care and to make products which can, which can take care or take uh, part in our life a longer period. Of course, we, when we look from the design point of view in Volkswagen, we have many examples. For example, when we started with designing this car, of course, we looked cars like, for example, Golf or like the T1. Or we actually looked even the, the model, the type 181. Uh, and this is something that is well, very nice, very reduced car, which gives maybe not the best aesthetic, but excellent experience. And that's something what is a swelled car about. Mobility is about experience. Therefore, when it was designing, we put these three components together. One of them, innovation. Of course, the way how we behave, let's say the, the sustainability, and as well for us, timeless, our everlasting design. So when we put this together, we already could see on the car, or we see it in the, in the morning presentation very well, the car become to have own character. Of course, that's something what Volkswagen is always looking for. Not only to have mainstream product, but to have product which gives something outstanding, something different, which could give you maybe other opportunity to enjoy the mobility. As you see the materials, the way how the car is, for example, designed from outside, it's very reduced. The design is very clean. We have almost no details, which can get old, and everything is uh, more, um, more orientated to very simple shapes, circles, straight lines, and of course the combination of the materials or the, or, the, or the division of the colors gives the car nice character, not only from outside, of course, as well from inside. When we look at the inside of the car, for us, it was very important to look at it in way of quality, in way of experience, in very positive way. Therefore, you see here many components and many materials which are giving us a completely different view. For example, steering wheel, which has completely different shape, or the materials like the wood, or the, or the other are all recycled and all in nice balance, giving very value-like character. So when we continue, we have, of course, interior which goes completely different direction. It's a very compact car, but in a way, there's no any, any, let's say, compromise. The car is giving, offering many, many op opportunities. And as we already heard today, it's not only good-looking, but of course, it has as well lots of uh, possibilities of variations. For example, we can adjust this car in, in way to the bed and you could theoretically go long or short trip and experience your adventure, maybe even a very, very uh, close place where you maybe even stay and sleep in the car. So when we look at this, of course for us it's important to get the young generation to love the cars even more and who, for example, is young or we all love the gaming. And of course, for us, it was important to not only put here one car, which looks good, which has timeless design and is sustainable, but in a way to put it here, one box, which is gaming. Something where you can go in, you can enjoy your time, you can share your time. And of course, it is as important for us that it's not only you play gaming, but you can maybe make the streamings and all the other contacts with your friends and, and share. Because my dream is a little bit that the car, when it's standing on the road, sometimes it's just taking place. And you know, I wish that the car is taking a little bit more part in our life, but not being only used from A to B. But maybe that I even visit the car without having the intention to actually drive him. I just go there, I play, I enjoy, and then I leave again and go maybe next time for the drive. So, and therefore, we designed it, for example, in the car, a big screen, which come out and give huge opportunity to, to let's say, to enjoy that. As you can see on the picture behind me, the, the screen come out and then is with the projector from the back presented nice picture. Of course, uh, as you see on the next picture, you can see that you don't need to sit in the front. You can sit in the back, put your legs up and then, and then play. The most important thing is not necessarily just this car, it's more just our attention to look the young generation, to look the other people and the needs, and as well the responsibility on way of designing the cars in the future. Therefore, we would love to give you opportunity, and I hope you will, you will have the time to look at it, the car, because there's a lot to, this, to, to experience. But of course, it's not only about the gaming, as well about this detox, this reduction. For us, it's important that 
anybody can experience whatever he needs, but on not cost of somebody else. Sharing, enjoying, and as well being mobile, that's something what we would love to have it, and this is something what Volkswagen is standing for, and that's something what, of course, we, are, we try to give it in this product, but more important for me is we will push in the future, in the next and other cars. So thank you very much for watching me today. And I hope you will enjoy the car. I hope you enjoy today the day. And I hope we will enjoy in the future all these opportunities or the chances of mobility and as well the chances of sharing our time with the mobility. So thank you very much and enjoy the day. Thank you. So if we have any questions from the audience, we'd be more than happy to take them now. He's here now. He can answer them for you. We have a microphone. So just please raise your hand and Josef will be able to answer your question right here for you. Do I see any hands, any questions? Oh, yes. Sir, in the front. Yes, what's the, what are the chances of production for this vehicle? Uh, I mean, there are always chances. Let's see. Of course, we already know that we are planning car in certain size, similar size. Therefore, um, everything is possible, yeah? Thanks. Thank you. Do we have any further questions? Anyone? All right. Then at this point, Josef, you said it. Mobility is all about the experience. I think we can look f forward to many, many more different experiences in the future. Thank you for giving us this experience. Thank you, Martin. Have a great day. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Have a great day at IAA. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also der ID Live und ich habe jetzt im So there it is, the ID Live. And now I can talk to Ralph Brandstetter, the CEO of Volkswagen. Now, first of all, congratulations on the world premiere. Well, great. Thanks, and that was great fun introducing the car. Now, this car really responds to the needs of people who want to switch, and also we've seen that in the show right now. So, what do you think the ID Live stands for? The ID Live really is a glimpse into the future in terms of how we envision mobility, urban mobility. Mobility. And of course, it's electric connected, carbon neutral, but we believe that the next generation wants more. They expect more of their cars, not only in the sense of mobility, but also special experiences. And this is why we are showing this ID Life here today. Now, Volkswagen traditional stands for mobility available to the masses. Now, what about this vehicle? How important is it to really mainstream e-mobility? Well, this is our promise. We are on our way to mobility for all, electric mobility for all. What that means is we want to make it possible for as many people as possible to drive electric vehicles and actively contribute to climate action. And this is our answer. The MEB, our modular electric matrix, really is the technological foundation for that. And now the scalability and the progress we're making, we are also in a position to make this car available for 20, 25, thousand euros. So Volkswagen is accelerating further on its way to zero. Between 2033 and 2035, the last combustion engine will be rolling off the lines, which means the Volkswagen future is electric based on the MEB, the modular electric matrix. So this quick switching, would, have been would that have been possible without the MEB? No, of course not. The MEB is our technological basis and it showcases our competence. We're the champion of platform development. This is part of our DNA and the D MEB is just a case in point. And this makes sure we can now build vehicles that, like the ID3 all the way to an SUV seven-seater, are based on one single platform. And this is a wonderful glimpse into the future, a compact vehicle which will be available for about 20,000 euros in 2025. And the drivetrain is one thing, but digital technologies is yet another dimension. I was reading just recently that Volkswagen is developing cars like smartphones. What does that mean? Well, it means the vehicle is fully connected. An important technological highlight is that those vehicles, like your mobile phones, can be updated over the air, now, which means your car remains top-notch and fresh 
and state-of-the-art. So this digital transformation also makes sure that new additional ideas can be created, like functions on demand. Now imagine when a customer is buying a car at a affordable price, and at some point they want to add electrical boost functions at the push of the button. Now that would be possible. Or maybe add, you activate your LED matrix light. Now all of these ideas are out there, and some of those will also be rolled out here in a car like that. Now, Ralph, thank you very much for those insights, and I see there are many journalists in the room here who are waiting to talk to you. They want to see and touch the ID Life. Thank you very much. And now we're going to have a look at who is with uh, Tanya in her studio. Interesting guests. So back to you. Yes, I do, Sina. I get to talk to the young innovators. Yasmin, Johannes, congratulations on your fabulous presentation for the ID Life just now. And Divius, the third member of the team is Marvin, who we've just seen on stage, and he'll be our guest in the studio this afternoon, and he'll answer your questions. So don't forget to submit your questions about the ID Life on Instagram. You can just click through the stories at Volkswagen and add your questions. Yasmin and Johannes, you were commissioned by Ralf Brandstetter to design and develop the ID Life. Now it's finally on stage. How does that feel? Yeah, finally. Great. <laughs> Johannes, yeah, big, big relief. Yeah, really it's finally amazing. out there. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Yasmin, you're actually a UX UI design specialist at Cariad, and Cariad is Volkswagen Group's subsidiary software company. Carriad itself has an amazing mission to actually reinvent the car for everyone. So can you tell us what's so special about the ID life from a digital perspective? Yeah, from a digital, from a digital perspective, we can say that we are taking a completely new approach for the level of app integration in this car. And yeah, you can take your personal device and it's seamlessly integrated into the operation. And you can use your phone to watch series or play games. You've even got a, a cinema in there, right? So it's actually much more than just a car. Yeah, it is. The ID Life is yeah, a car for the mobility of the young urban generation. And yeah, you can use your phone, select the latest episode of your favorite show and move the rear seat to the relaxing position and enjoy watching it under the stars with the roof open. And Johannes, it looks really stylish as well. You were involved in the exterior design of the car. How do you actually go about designing a new vehicle? At first, I have to say it's always an amazing feeling to create a new car because to see it from sketch coming to reality and then to, to develop till the stage here, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling to see it now here live because the whole team, we are a lot of people working together at this kind of uh, exterior in this case and it was like really an amazing development okay well we've got a short film about the making of which we'll take a look at now unpainted loose cables no interior about a week before its world premiere the id life is not exactly presentable mechanics are busy working on the car and adjusting things after all many of the components are one of a kind made exclusively for this concept Josef Kaban designed the ID Life together with his team and is now overseeing the work. It takes about three weeks to get the car ready and there is little room for mistakes. When building show cars, the biggest challenge is working so close to the edge of the future. We work very closely with the design department to turn their ideas into something real in a very short time frame. But even though the ID Life is made by hand, it's still based on the MEB, the Modular Electric Toolkit. Now for the first time in a smaller version with front-wheel drive. Once more, this proves the MEB's unique flexibility. From compact cars to vans, this platform can do it all. Just a few days before its appearance, this show star is starting to take shape, inside and out. Once complete, it will offer a glimpse into Volkswagen's electric future in the compact segment at the IAA. Extremely compact on the outside and with ample space inside, it can be many things. A gaming center, a movie lounge, or just a place to chill. What makes the show car special is its air chamber textile roof and hood that are very innovative and removable. Also the paint is sustainable and studded with pixels. And the interior is designed like a lounge to make the charging process more comfortable. 
The ID Life makes modern living easier and better. It's digital, climate friendly, sustainable, and affordable to make e mobility more attractive to even more people. With a starting price of 20,000 euros, the production model of the first ID Life will launch in the compact segment in 2025. E mobility for everyone. Johannes, so we've seen a lot of innovative materials that are involved there. Can you give us some more examples of sustainable materials that you've used for the ID Life? Yes, definitely. At first, I, it's always nice for me also to see this kind of development again on, on, on a movie. It's, it's so nice to see the people working on this car. Um, with the materials, we put a lot of thought there really into this. And we have for the, for example, uh, we have in the interior the seat covers. Like I said on stage, they are made of this Art Velour Eco. And these are made out of uh, recycled PET bottles and old T-shirts. Uh, but also in production already, for example, our carpets, what we have in the cars already, they are made out of uh, almost like 300 PET bottles. So we re recycle already on the cars on the street. Okay, I'm going to go and, and sit inside the car a little bit later. I'm going to feel all those wonderful new sustainable materials. Yasmin and Johannes, so what do you think customers will love most about the ID Life? Let, let me start maybe okay. there, because the, the, the begin of this concept was for us the, the mix of the digitalization and the sustainability. And this combination we, we started to integrate in, in almost every detail. And for example, then in the interior, we have this kind of extreme feature like the cinema movie, where, where we put so much love already into these kind of details to get there a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of gimmicks for the customer again mm -hmm. yeah and i would say it depends so if you're more into gaming or watching movies or series okay something for everyone okay yeah. well done all the best for the rollout hopefully of the id life soon thank you for joining me here today Thanks. sina over to you Ich fasse noch einmal zusammen. All right, so let me summarize with the ID Live Volkswagen is showcasing its version of the entry level electric mobility sector. The ID Live is compact, it's digital, climate friendly, affordable. And this afternoon, when we come back, we'll dwell on some of these themes in further detail. We'll talk to a tech expert and influencer Nicole Scott. And she's going to talk about the intrinsic values of the future vehicle generations. And we talk to our head of design, Josef Kaban, about his secret recipe for timeless and very stylish design. And we're also looking forward to your questions around the ID Live. So please write to us on Instagram. There's still time. And you'll hear the answers later on in our Ask Me Anything section. So this has taken us to the end of our first show. We'll be back at 1.30. So see you soon. Hello everyone and welcome to our Volkswagen EIA Way to Zero talk on the supply chain. My name is Martin and I'm really excited to see so many people here live in person for the first time again after such a long time. And we now want to talk about the supply chain. Now, the reduction of the CO2 footprint or the recycling of raw materials, those are quite common measures when it comes to really helping with decarbonization. But sustainability is about so much more than carbon neutrality. Social aspects, for example, are also important, like working conditions, human rights, or transparency. And especially when it comes to supply chain. So that's what we're going to talk about today and right now. And I have just the perfect people to talk to here. So let me introduce them first. He is the founding executive director of the UN Global Compact and a spokesperson for the Volkswagen Sustainability Council, Georg Kell. Please give him a big round of applause. Yes, right there. Oh, yeah, right there. And joining him is the Chief Purchasing Officer for the Volkswagen Group, Murat Axel. Murat, good morning, Georg. Good morning, good to have you two here on the stage in Munich live because I remember last time we spoke virtually and now we, can get, we get to meet in person. Now, Murat, let me start with you. Um, 
Volkswagen as a company is in the biggest transformation in its history. A lot is happening and you joined this way to zero also for the Volkswagen brand. So what motivates you personally to help with decarbonization, to help this company become net carbon neutral? Martin, that's a very personal start. Um, yeah, L let me tell you a personal story. I did spend this summer in my home country in Turkey with my parents. And as you probably all have seen, there were heavy um, fires in the woods. And, you know, I could really experience them personally that climate change is coming. And, you know, this really motivates that we need to work against it. Secondly, I discussed a lot with my parents about our family tree, our history. And our family was always... Uh, uh, family of migrants and movers and the grandfather of my grandfather he moved from Georgia to Turkey and I asked my father why did they select the area where we were which is um, in my in my birth city of Bursa and aroundings which is very green and he said the reason why they have selected this place was because there was a lot of green forests and woods and secondly there was a lot of water and if you have woods green and water that's where you can live easily. And my father said when he was young, there was more woods than it's right now. And as I have also kids, you know, I think we need to work to make also the life for our kids sustainable, that they can still enjoy the beautiful nature which we have. And in Volkswagen, we are responsible for 1% of the total emission in the world. And I think this is a lot. And as a being a board member where we can shape the mobility of the future, that's my personal motivation that we can really make our planet safe also for our children. That's my personal motivation. Thank you very much for sharing this. I think, you know, as parents, we can all share that sentiment with you. Now, Georg, let me ask you, the UN Global Compact is the world's largest global corporate sustainability initiative, and it's voluntary. You have a lot of members, I believe over 9,000 members. Um, so you have a lot of experience and really you know what's going on globally. Um, tell us from your perspective, where does, stand, where does Volkswagen stand today? Well, uh, let me start by saying I was attracted to engage with Volkswagen when the crisis was at the peak, because during crisis situations, organizations and people have an opportunity to fundamentally reorient themselves. So the hypothesis was a crisis opportunity for change. And that's how the journey started a few years ago. And I can say this assumption has played out 100%. Today, Volkswagen is, in, as you said, in the middle of the biggest transformation in modern history we have ever seen, moving away from an industrial era mindset into a future fit mindset where decarbonization, electrification, and sustainability is of strategic relevance. So it's from my perspective, when a global company such as Volkswagen with, with its huge footprint and its supply chain embraces change proactively, it not only secures its own future, because that's where the trend is going to, it also has a huge ripple effect on markets and societies. For example, green energy transformation. It's wonderful to see Herbert Dies and Enel and Ibertola now collaborating and pushing Europe to make it easier to build up renewable energy. It's wonderful to see industry coupling and innovation happening. So I think Volkswagen is extremely well positioned to chart and make the future. But to make it happen, we all need to double down and also make sure that the framework conditions are supportive. And when we look around this stand here, lots of electric cars, to be honest, only electric cars right here. So let's get Let's dive right into it. Is the electric car more sustainable than the combustion engine? Yes, clearly it is. And um, let me give you some numbers for it. For example, if you take an internal combustion engine car, take our Golf 8 for the moment. Um, so you can dissect this into three areas. First is the usage area. 
obviously an ICE car, you know, is using fossil energy. The second is the production, you know, in the plant we need to reduce our and use green steel. And then about 70 to 80 percent of the uh, materials comes from suppliers. And in the Gulf, 17 percent of the emissions during this life cycle are caused in the supply chain, 17, one seven. In the ID3, ID3, for example, which is a similar size of car, the usage phase, if you use an EU mix and if you use green energy, this is gone. You zero it out. In the production area, 43 of our 118 plants are using already um, uh, green energy, so is Zwickau. So this means all the burden is in the supply chain. 42%, so almost two and a half times more than in the Gulf of the CO2 emissions happens obviously in the supply chain. And this is also because we are using materials which, which are producing a lot of CO2. And that's why that's the key factor for the future to get um, on, on our way to zero, um, go to zero CO2 emission. That's why it's so important that we have a focus on that. And you just mentioned the ID3 standing right there. So can you give us specifics about the balance sheet? You mentioned, okay, it's, it's zero, it's net neutral. Yeah. Um, so on the supply chain, on the ID3 is 42%, which is an equivalent to 13 tons CO2 per vehicle, 13 tons. If you split this out again, 80% is in three areas. Area number one is obviously the battery, the battery cell and the battery system. The second big area is steel, and the third area is aluminum. If you manage to reduce here or even eliminate the CO2 emission, you can reduce this 13 ton, you know, dramatically. And that's exactly where we're focusing in the supply chain um, specifically. Wow, that's impressive. That's already happening now. So where do you see further options to optimize this when going towards decarbonization? I mean, you mentioned aluminum, steel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let me start with, with the battery uh, production. We have already, there are two areas. The one area is where we produce the battery cells. It's coming from our suppliers. And we have already made sure that the suppliers we are using can only use green energy for their production. This is how we make sure that we get only suppliers using green energy for batteries. But then when we have the batteries, you know, we need to recycle them. You know, there are raw materials which are very rare, and that's why we need to treat them well. And in Salzgitter, in our facility of uh, Volkswagen Group Components, we have our first recycling uh, equipment. And pilot study shows that about 90% of all the battery cell production can be really wow. recycled. That's what we talk and we call a circular economy. The second element is obviously steel. Steel. Um, here, we have a longer way to go. Green energy is the key for that. Uh, we are working with all steel suppliers that they use green energy. It's a long way because it's, not because it's a disruptive technology, so they need to go from the ovens uh, back to electrolytes or even hydrogen, and this causes a lot of investments. But I think this is the way, and we are supporting all our steel suppliers towards green steel. The third is aluminum. So if you just imagine, aluminum has a ratio of 8 to 1. So 8 kilogram uh, CO2 emission per 1 kilogram aluminum produced. So if you use um, reduced primary aluminum, re CO2 reduced primary aluminum, you can halve that already. For example, the ID3 you just mentioned, the rims, you know, in the second generation, we are going for CO2 reduced primary, primary aluminum, which will reduce to four kilograms per uh, CO2 per kilogram aluminum. But the real future, and I think with aluminum you can do that very well, is recycling. Mm -hmm. You need to use secondary aluminum on the underbody structure. We have already parts where we are doing this. That's why on aluminum, recycling will be the key factor. With these three elements, you are attacking 80% of the bill of material. And I think this will be a big contribution, which we, together with our suppliers, will drive in the future. 
And Volkswagen is not alone in that challenge, right? I mean, this goes across the whole industry to, to tackle this challenge and find where do we have leverage when it comes to these materials. Well, there are several big trends uh, reinforcing the importance of this work. One is, uh, obviously, the whole industry is now sourcing more raw, mat raw materials. The spotlight is increasingly on good, sustainable performance. You cannot build a sustainable company based on child labor. So I'm very happy that Volkswagen now has a state-of-the-art S rating, sustainability rating, data-driven, very important to look for improvements. Secondly, also to collaborate on partnerships and projects like Cobalt for Development, which our council has helped to get off the ground. Uh, and thirdly, there's increasingly regulation kicking in. In Germany, we have now the supply chain law, the European Parliament is discussing it, so creating more transparency and uh, developing performance criteria is key. There's a bigger issue behind it, I would say, and that is uh, uh, one is, besides regulation and growing transparency, there is also the increased recognition that we have to reduce extraction in the beginning. The world's Planetary boundaries are hitting critical targets in many areas, and mining is just a dirty business by definition. You, it can be less dirty and less damaging, and that's very important. But ultimately, we have to move to closed loop circles, Kreislaufwirtschaft, circular economy. And I'm very happy that the new battery concepts in the making are based on these parameters, because planning for the future you have to anticipate that the world is becoming a very troublesome place where we have to prepare and then having closed loop circles creates more resilience, but it also has a positive impact. So I want to encourage Volkswagen to double down on these developments. These are very important trends. I'm also extremely happy that Volkswagen in 2017 has declared decarbonization as being a strategic goal and incorporating it in all activities and investment decisions. And that means Volkswagen understood that the future has to go to net zero and reducing carbon, net negative carbon arguably, is the currency of the future. So it is, because in the end, it's about revaluation and valuing what is important and negative carbon is the currency of the future. Martin, let me add to, to Georg's point here. I would like to take on, as I can see also a lot of suppliers are here on the show. Let me clearly also um, and express here what our purchasing criteria is, how we select suppliers. In the past, until 2019, we had four main criteria. It was quality, supply security, technology, and cost. So they're equally important. But since 2019, after the strategic commitment in 2017, we in purchasing also adapted that and added the fifth priority, which we call sustainability. It's really an equal pillar, and it has, I call it always veto rights. So if you fail in the sustainability rating, which is a very standardized process, and if you grade on all the four elements, still you will be not awarded at the Volkswagen Group. It's a key element that you also fulfill our sustainability uh, priorities and standards. And we are doing this since 2019 yeah. for all our sourcings. Not only the batteries or the critical materials, we do it for all. So, so quite a few incentives to have them join your way to zero. But Georg, I mean, how difficult is it really? Volkswagen has a lot of suppliers to really have a sustainable supply chain in the end? It's a long, long way, but the journey has to be started. Volkswagen started already, seriously. It needs other big companies to fall in line because uh, the world can only be improved if we have a new paradigm of sustainable sourcing. Technology digitalization is a great enabler. Increasingly data-driven analytics allows better assessments. 
I think we also have to have an open mind and supporting the people on the ground because often those who supply are working under extreme harsh circumstances and they want to improve, they want to learn, but sometimes they're missing the know-how, sometimes a small investment. So the more Volkswagen also stretches out a hand and not just kicks out, three strikes out, which is the easy way from a compliance angle, but from a developmental and long-term angle, it is actually much more helpful to collaborate and to partner and to support, to share know-how where possible. And uh, I mentioned Cobalt for Development. It's one example. Everybody knows the DRC, Congo, is really a complicated case. What you can do there is you can help people on the ground, improve labor conditions, make sure children go into school and don't work in mines. So Volkswagen can and does a lot in this area. And I'm a great advocate for engagement because the people there need a living too and they're striving for. And I'm sometimes saying it's the little island theory because big companies who bring their standards with them, when they invest somewhere, they usually don't slow down. They want others to come up. And that's a developmental contribution. I think it's also very important. Yeah. Let me ask a provocative question. I mean, and you mentioned the sourcing of raw materials and the working conditions. So. Yes, it is a global effort and it takes a lot of partners, but is it also utopia? I mean, is it realistic that we will at some point actually have a fully sustainable and transparent supply chain? Is that realistic? I think yes, in some industries it's already happening in luxury good production, for example. I mean, DNA tracking, uh, inserting into material, uh, codified is uh, on its way. It's happening with cobalt. It will happen with other materials at some point. Yes, I think this is the convergence of technology and sustainability, which reinforces each other. And Herbert Dies before made that great point too, that the big mega trends of the world today are besides te technology, sustainability. And seeing how the two trends reinforce each other, that's where you have the winning solutions for the future. You want to be socially responsible, you want to contribute to transparency, but you also want to have an economic value adding capacity. And through this combination, I think it's possible. Now, ultimately, we need governments to live up as well. And we know it's an imperfect world. 70% of the world's countries are systemically corrupt. Imagine that, systemically. Uh, Autocratic regimes already contribute more to global GDP than democracies. So we are living in an imperfect world. And even more important than I would argue is how a big company such as Volkswagen behaves and if it leads by example. Because these bottom-up examples, these little island theory yeah. remains very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me um, add on that on our corporate strategy. So it's a uh, street three-stage strategy. First is obviously avoiding it. Secondly is reducing it. And then if there is a rest, then it's compensate. And that's what you probably refer to, you know, how um, close the compensation point can come to zero. Mm -hmm. And that's a long way, obviously. We have 40,000 suppliers which go into to fifth, sixth, and tier stages. And to control that, that's a long way. But we are, we are committed. And uh, the key word for that is transparency. So we need to really have transparency in the supply chain. We are committed to that. And uh, God thanks that digitalization is helping here. So you can use blockchain. You can use um, different cloud parameters. And we have kicked this off within. And uh, that's, I think, the key that transparency will help that also in the supply chain we will reduce and get the compensation portion as close as possible to zero. And Georg just mentioned that the carrot will always be more successful than the stick, so you need to give them incentives. But what happens, and you spoke about the rating for the suppliers, what happens when they actually, when you, when you find out violations um, of these ratings or the, the agreements about sustainability from the suppliers? What, what will happen? Do you have penalties or? Um, 
this is also clearly regulated. We thought a lot about that, and there was a discussion, should we immediately penalize if there was um, something going wrong? And we said, no, as every human being in life or in sports, we uh, believe into the concept of having first a yellow card, you know, saying, look, you know, this wasn't foul, this was not correct. Yeah. You know, what are your action items to mitigate that this never happens again? And usually this works. You know, in 2019, we had 34 cases which we have uh, examined and uh, almost all of them, the yellow card was, it was helpful to bring them back to our goals. But obviously, if also this doesn't work, yes, then we need to exclude them from our contract. That's the consequence. We're almost out of time, so let me ask the final question to both of you. Um, we heard that there's already ha a lot happening within Volkswagen Group. So what are you really proud of today? What is really something you, you consider as an accomplishment? And what are you looking forward to? What do you think is good that it happens next? What are the next steps, Georg? Yeah, the big points, just to sum up, decarbonization is absolute a strategic priority at all levels. I think this is a huge, huge uh, new orientation. Secondly, the uh, supplier code introduced is state of the art. I also happen to know Volkswagen's compliance machinery, which, wow, is also really state of the art. So that is something one can be proud of, but looking forward, the challenges ahead are enormous in terms of material supply. So making progress on circular economy, in my view, is very important, strategically, conceptually, operationally. That is one. Then secondly, also working with governments here and there to improve the framework conditions uh, can be helpful, be it on carbon pricing within the European Union or other activities. And then last but not least is this partnership notion. I mentioned already one or two ongoing partnerships, but also cross-industry. And I know Volkswagen is working with other like-minded companies uh, because comp Volkswagen is big, but the problems out there are very big too. <laughs> so you need collaboration. Yeah. So okay. the biggest thing I'm proud of, I mean, I'm a bit more than a year now with, with the Volkswagen Group. There are a lot of things, but one thing I'm very proud of is that not only... Volkswagen is reinventing themselves according to new Volkswagen. Also, we as purchasing, we, go to, we need to go to a new world, which, which we call new purchasing. We will need partners. We will treat suppliers more as partners. Uh, we will not have the, the black curtain thing where we do our own thing. We believe the key word was transparency in the supply chain. It's a joint effort. We cannot do this alone. That's why... We are embracing our suppliers here to be together with us and to work on transparency. And I'm very proud that we have joined with other companies to the Catena X, for example, yeah. where we are also publishing our supply chains because at the end of the day, our intelligence should be used also by others and we should use the intelligence of others and we can support each other with this. You are really eliminating and uh, extrapolating that you can get uh, a better feeling for these 40,000 suppliers because the majority of the suppliers which are supporting and supplying Volkswagen also support, supporting and supplying all other OEMs. And that's the key achievement so far, but still a long way to go. Thank you so much. I love what you just said. Let's share our intelligence across industry boundaries. Let's go this way to zero together. Thank you very much for sharing your insights and your ambitions. All the best for your personal journeys and have a great rest of the day here at EAA. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you.